Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Bloodborne. So, today we are going to go ahead and continue to get our weapons upgraded and whatnot. Last episode, we uh, ran into the uh, Hunter's Nightmare just to grab a few chunks and whatnot. Died, I think, one time <laughs> due to some horse crap. But, nonetheless, we got that weapon upgraded again, and now we are going to be heading to these two areas that I have access to now because I have the uh, Tonsil Stone and the uh, Canehurst Summons. And we're going to go ahead and pick up some more upgrade materials and whatnot. There are a few chunks in the Nightmare, as well as in Canehurst, that we can use to get our weapon upgraded at least one more time, so that we can be prepared for the areas ahead. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and hand, head over to uh, the uh, Nightmare Frontier, I believe. That's what it's called, Nightmare Frontier? Yeah. We're going to go ahead and head over there, get the chunks over there, and then we're going to head over to Canehurst after we're done to get those chunks and the uh, blood gem to put into our weapon to get even more damage. So that is the plan for this session, and let us begin. So nonetheless, folks, uh, I was uh, thinking about something recently, and it's the fact that, uh, you know, it's actually been, I think, well over a year since I said that I wanted to uh, get into streaming Bloodborne, right? And the funny thing is, I, I was thinking that, you know, like, by then... <laughs> I was going to be able to, you know, have some kind of work set up or something to where I can, you know, afford some internet, get some uh, streaming gear and whatnot, and have at it. Unfortunately, 2020 had other words. Although, you know, to this day and whatnot, despite what people want to say about 2020, I don't really think it was as terrible as people make it out to be. It's just that people, again, especially in modern countries, they're not used to hardships. So they assume that, you know, life isn't supposed to give you that many lemons, you know, but, uh, places where people are quite used to things like that, you know, it's not really that uncommon. <laughs> Nonetheless, though, I do accept the fact that, you know, it was a bit more difficult. <laughs> Still, though, you know, it did involve a bit of, uh, annoyances for me personally in relation, again, mainly to work, though, just because of how difficult it was to find. <laughs> like I said, you know, in a few episodes ago, I was having trouble before then, but that really didn't help at all, you know? So that was pretty much my main annoyance. Alrighty. Now, look at this cutscene, because this is what I'm talking about, the other one, like, the other one is airheaded. Look at this. <laughs> Oh, Amidala. Oh, Amidala. <laughs> Have mercy on the poor bastard. <laughs> see what I mean? <laughs> you can clearly see, like, there's, like, a brain. I, I would assume that's the brain. You know? In its uh, head, and it's not in there in the uh, other one. But hopefully, I like I said, I'll remember to show you the little root glitch, I think, a visual glitch, and whatnot. That occurs over there, and whatnot. So now we're just going to go ahead and make our way to the Nightmare Frontier. There's nothing really in this building aside from, like, chalice dungeon materials and a uh, really useful uh, arcane weapon, which is the Augur of Abriatus. But considering that we're not going to be leveling arcane at all for this build and whatnot, this is just going to be a basic... Uh, melee build and whatnot. I'm not gonna bother picking it up. Again, though, it's very useful, and I hope to, uh, stream this one of these days when I actually have something good happening to me for once. And, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I can then, you know, showcase the power of it. Now, I ran back here because I see I have nine insight, and you don't want that much insight here because you're going to be dealing with, you know, a few, there's a few places where they have it, but, like, the Winter Lanterns, and that equals pretty much an instant frenzy, so. You'll see later on about how uh, important it is that I, um, Welcome. get rid of this stuff, because well, it's, I'm telling you, it's not really that much before you can get frenzied or whatnot, so. I just said, let me go ahead and get that done, get rid of all this real quick, and then go back. And even with one frenzy, watch how much frenzy I get, like, when I encounter a uh, Winter Lantern. It's absolutely atrocious. Nonetheless, I don't mind this, because, hey. 
you know. At least I get some more buffs. Now, I just want to show you how stupid this is. Look at this. I said, let me just go ahead and show you how stupid the uh, insight is. Not insight, but like the papers are. Look at this. Are you kidding me? It jumps up that much just because, you know, you've killed Vicar Amelia and whatnot. It's absolutely ludicrous. Literally starts going from 1,000 to like 5,000 a pop. It's... No. <laughs> That's not okay. I really don't like that. I really feel like it should have stayed where it was, but... Hey, this is a freaking uh, six-year-old game, I think, now. Yeah, it came out in 2015. So, this is a six-year-old game, so it doesn't really matter what I think now, does it? You know? <laughs> it's just annoying that, like, you know... That's why you really should do all your farming. Uh, and, uh, what, what is it called? Yahargul? Do all your farming right there, kill the pigs and whatnot. It's time-consuming, but... If you're going to be struggling in this game and you think you're going to be dying over and over again to a lot of bosses and whatnot, it's at least worth it to get at least, like, 50. If you're not going to get 99, then just at least get, like, 50 bolt paper, 50 fire paper, and you'll be good. I'd never go through that much. Well, you obviously haven't really played a challenge run. <laughs> so, yeah, you know. Or if you're planning on doing the dungeons, I wouldn't be so sure, <laughs> you know. I wouldn't be so sure. But nonetheless, you know, like, on actual challenge runs, I've actually only really struggled in certain areas. Certain bosses I haven't really actually had that much ter trouble with, you know? Believe it or not. I know on Orphan I was kind of struggling, but mainly just because uh, there were moments where he wasn't taking advantage of the counter damage. And I'll look at this. That's the enemy that's going to have the chunks. And uh, as you can see, it can, in fact, fight back. Now watch closely here. I had thought that I hit it and I thought he was dead and it just knocks you off. Absolutely stupid to me. And so I was like, oh great, now I'm down here. With all these, uh, I think they're called messenger eaters. And the silver beast had followed me, so I just shot him in the face. And said, you know what, I'm not going to try and go around, I'm just going to take my bolt hunter's mark and get out of here. This, uh crystal lizard that actually hits back isn't even worth it to kill this one i think it's just twin blood zones i believe but yeah i thought i killed it and it had a sliver of health a literal pixel and it just smacked me off so yeah i've never really been too fond of like certain enemies in bloodborne just having like instant knockdowns if i really haven't it's either like an instant knockdown like an overhead smashed where you're just like a pancake or just fall back and i'm like come on dude and that's just complete nonsense. <laughs> For some attacks that are that quick, to just have an instant knockdown, it's just really more annoying than anything. Yeah, and that enemy is just programmed to uh, chase you, even if you, like, don't really disturb it and whatnot, so... I'm just gotta hurry up. Be careful down here, because there is one hiding right in that cave. Those are blood vials to, like, bait you in and whatnot. So I just said, you know, let me just kill this thing. And uh, get my, uh, you know, blood vials. Because that's very useful and whatnot. And I just want to show you, these idiots over here are playing Donkey Kong. And they're just throwing a bunch of rocks at you. And so you want to just book it. You want to book it around and say, I don't want any of that. Get out of here, look out for this. I jumped because, hey, I was trying to roll, but, you know... Even, I've noticed that even if you, uh, stop trying to run for a moment, like, you let go of the stick to slow down, sometimes if you try and roll immediately, they'll still count that as running, and you'll jump instead of roll. Luckily, I have a bit of health and defense because I leveled up, so it didn't really matter that much because of the fact that, again, you know, uh, I have a way to, uh, deal with his, um, with his damage. Now, I was trying not to engage this hunter, but this idiot just really kept following me for a moment, so I was just like, okay, idiot, you know. He, he really was persistent. He really was persistent, and I was just like, okay, let's do this. And so I just said, get the heck off of my ledge, you know, <laughs> and off off with him. Now, as you can see right over here, that's the idiot patches, and so what we're going to do is we're going to throw a rock at that spider. Just to knock him down. 
Now, sadly, even if you go back to uh, that area with the coins, he will still actually push you off. Even though you've knocked him down, like, the cutscene will still trigger and he'll push you off. You know? So, yeah. If you do hit him, though, like, I think he, like, just disappears into, like, nothingness, pretty much. Like, he, he's not dead, he's just not there anymore. Which I feel like if you hit him, then you should be able to pick that up. What that is, though, is it's just, uh, I think, coins? It's silver coins or something like that. And this is what you really want, the clockwise metamorphosis and whatnot. That's what you really want. Look at this Donkey Kong wannabe. Go ahead and eviscerate that idiot. There he goes. Now, again, a very good item here is the monocular, because when you are zoomed in with the monocular, you will only quick step. And quick steps have uh, less recovery than an actual roll. At least it feels like it, and it covers more distance, so it's just much better to... Uh, quick step a lot of times you can chain them together really well so you, know, you can just go ahead and get out of here and that's that now this is what I was talking about this is why I got rid of my um, insight and whatnot right over here All right, you'll see it in a moment don't trust that it looks like you can fall there it really does but you can't every time that I've tried to fall there I, I just die <laughs> So maybe you can, but I don't, I don't know what's up. See? Watch how much frenzy you get. Just watch. Just watch how much frenzy you get. Just from, like, one stab, I think. It's ludicrous. <laughs> I don't think I had any sedatives either, so if I got hit, I got hit. And remember, that's 75% of your uh, health bar gone. The best way to deal with this one is not to walk up to him, is just to shoot him with bone marrow ash and whatnot. That's the safest way to engage that enemy, because if you try and engage it, there's a high chance that you might get seen by the Winter Lantern, and you'll start getting frenzied as well as a uh, deal with, um, what, what is it called? The actual uh, Crystal Lizard, and then you might get knocked off, so it's just really not worth it to do that and whatnot. Now, these crystal lizards and whatnot, they really only have uh, twin bloodstones, and like I said, that's not really that useful for me right now. Because I have enough, I believe, to upgrade my pistol, I just haven't yet. And uh, my weapon is already at plus six right now. Not six, it's at plus seven. And I'm getting these chunks so I can go to at least plus eight and whatnot. So it's not really worth my time, and we've got everything that we want out of here. The boss is still here, but we'll come back and do Amy G another time. We'll come back and do Amy G another time. And now that we have that shortcut, we'll be able to get straight to the boss room. So, that's all good. And, you know, if you guys are feeling like uh, you want to see more of like these areas and whatnot, like I said, you know, hopefully one of these days when things can actually start working out for me for a change, you know, I can, and I can get some internet, then, yeah, I can, you know, stream this and I'll do a better job of showcasing the entire area and whatnot. Because it's a very interesting area. It really is. As is the next area that we are about to go to, which is Canehurst. And Canehurst has some more chunks and whatnot. Now, watch what happens in Canehurst, because I could not believe this. Just, just watch. Like, I could not believe that that happened while I was recording and whatnot. So, I, I just really want to show that off. I do apologize if you can hear that in the background. I believe that is a plane. You know, like where I live, I don't live too far away from an airport. So, sometimes, you know, you'll you'll hear planes taking off and whatnot. So, forgive me if you do uh, hear that. My apologies. Okay, we got two loading screens. Alright, I don't, I don't think we'll have a third this time. Yeah, we only got two this time. So... This is the area that we went to. We went to uh, Witches of Hemwick. And we need to go this way. I don't know what I was doing. And over here, over yonder, if we go to a certain monument, we will be able to get to Canehurst and whatnot. But first, we need to deal with these guys. And for some reason, I was literally just hesitant about engaging them. And then I just got launched with Molotovs. And so I was just like, okay, I've had enough of this. 
just let me go ahead and do a running attack and just eviscerate all of them in one shot, you know. This executioner is programmed to uh, come up and try and attack you the moment that you're uh, hitting the old woman. I guess he uh, he likes him or something. He's being a simp, I guess, as they say. You know, the funny thing is with me, I don't really like labels at all. But I don't know why I've taken to, like, you know, like the word simp and thought. And I don't necessarily, like, overuse it. Like a lot of places where they're like, oh my goodness, you're a simp, you're a thought, or whatnot. It's just, it's such a less vulgar way to, uh, you know, call someone something than, like, you know, like, the other things. It just sounds so, I don't know. It's just, it, it just sounds a bit more, uh, what's the word? Not necessarily classy, but, again, it just sounds a lot less vulgar than, you know, the other options. And so I decided, you know, here, just show you this little cutscene. This little horse is running us to, uh, Kanehurst. Yep, Kanehurst. You know, the castle looks pretty, but... Eh. It's pretty much the only good thing about this area. I don't really think I can like any of the enemies in this area. They're annoying. They're, pes they're pesky. Some are literal freaking fleas. Just a, just a nuisance. You got the maggots over here. The boss of this area is annoying. I don't really think I like anything about this area, other than the, uh, castle itself. You're able to juke most of them, so that's good. Most of the time, that's a death sentence, but we, uh, we got it off. I went over here to just to make sure that I got that lantern. Sometimes, you know, you just smash through, uh, X so fast that sometimes you don't know if it really registered. So, that's just what I was doing. Now, the good thing about our, uh, TC is it has bonus damage in both of its forms, like in the uh, cane form, it has uh, righteous damage, which is, you know, more damage for enemies in Kanehurst, but that's about it. Still, though, I don't want to mess with those freaking fleas. The best weapon for them is actually the Hurt Camera, because it has, like, what, 50% 50, 50 more damage to, like, you know, enemies that take righteous damage? It's pretty hard. It's pretty hard. The uh, hammer mode. We'll shred them. Though, again, they're still freaking annoying, so do you want to put up with that? So there's a chunk over here. And those little enemies right there flailing and whatnot, the slave dudes, they're just... No. You don't want to mess with a lot of these enemies. That's why I just don't really care for this area and whatnot. I just really don't. This is a trap. I just picked it up because... I just said, hey, why not? I'll just book it past him anyway. Just bullets, why not? So it's not really worth it. Now, watch what happens here. Just watch what happens here. I don't think it's this one. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. No, it's not this one. Watch what happens here. I was literally like, I'm kidding. Not, I'm kidding. I'm just like, I was literally done because... As much as I did it in, like, another playthrough, I just couldn't believe that it happened here. And so over here is another chunk. And watch this guy. Watch him. Watch him. Just a little too soon on the charge attack. A chunk. Guys, I don't really think you know this, but... These things can drop chunks, and it's literally like, I think, a 2% chance that they drop it. So the fact that I got a chunk, which helps us get our weapon to a, uh, you know, higher state, and I'm like, without even trying, I just got a chunk. And whatnot.
But I'm telling you folks, like, uh, I remember like on Blood Level 4, I think, I just decided to try and farm these guys for chunks, and I actually did end up, end up getting my weapon to like plus 9. But my goodness, it took forever. Farming chunks in this game is not, is not fun. There's not enough, they don't drop them enough. Not these guys, but like, the enemies that do drop them base game, they just don't drop them enough. They they really don't, and I, I don't like that. I I really don't care for that. That they made that like that, you know. Just booked it away from these guys though. So I was just like blown away that that enemy dropped a chunk. I was like, are you kidding me? You dropped a chunk. If only I was getting that drop rate before. Didn't really need to uh, open that because it's literally an online play only item. Look at me just getting stuck on literally all kinds of furniture right now. Not the greatest thing. Look out for this guy because if you get hit, then um, all of these stupid like uh, women just go insane. So I just like, you know, let me just go ahead and hit, hit this idiot. If you actually hit him from the stairs, he will approach you and then start floating because he will get stuck in between the stairs and the uh, platform that he was standing on. And uh, he will literally just be free counter damage, so that's a good way to deal with that. These guys are nothing to mess with. This little rapier idiot. Nothing to mess with. More chunks over here. I do not recall if there are more chunks like uh, over this way. I think there might be like one more. But I just said, you know, screw that. I'm just going to go ahead and do this over here. I just said, let me go ahead and make this jump and do that. Because it's just a bit easier and it's just a bit quicker to do. And over here we have another enemy that has chunks which we want to deal with. And there's even a, um, what is it called? A blood gem for the gun. So, there's no real point of why we shouldn't go ahead and pick those up, right? No real point. And over here we have another crystal lizard with chunks, so yeah. That's just that. I know that this that the uh, past two episodes have just been me like running around and just grabbing stuff, you know. But it's it's all right, it's all right, folks. I'm just trying to showcase, you know, like knowing where to go, knowing what to do, will literally put you at a nice advantage, whatnot. It really will. It'll do it in all the games: Dark Souls, Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 3, Bloodborne, Demon Souls. Just knowing where to go and what to do really helps. Helps tremendously. I hope one of these days that they make that new Demon Souls to be uh, compatible with PC. Because uh, I really don't plan on getting another console. <laughs> I'm pretty much done with consoles. I want PCs now. That's just me though. You know, I can only speak for myself. I just think it's not really worth it anymore personally. You know? You're always trying to add something else that you gotta pay. Welcome, what? Very well. Yeah, I just said, let me go ahead and put this into skill and do that. Remember it about this time, but I was just out of range or she was still recovering, so she didn't return the favor. So I just like, let me go ahead and upgrade this weapon one time. And there we go. So with that being said, we got our weapon upgraded again, and when we come back next time, we're going to show you the power of preparation and just how much damage it can allow us to do to enemies. Thank you all for watching, God bless, and I'll see you next time.